around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Letty. You mind what I say now? <laughs> you stay down on that bed. I'll look in on you in a day or so. <laughs> oh, sorry to have kept you waiting out here so long, Kitty. <laughs> but Letty had a lot on her mind. That's all right, Doc. <laughs> Kind of nice sitting here with the evening breeze blowing. Yes, and the air moves around more out here in the dozen town, and that's a fact. Yeah. Come on. Let's... Is Letty going to be all right? No, Kitty, she isn't. Oh, I'm sorry. It's her own fault. That sounds kind of heartless, Doc. No, I mean it. She calls me out here to tend to her when she feels bad enough, and then she never pays any attention to what I say. What do you mean? Well, sure as I'm driving this buggy, she's up on her feet right now. Oh, yes, doing some hard chore around the place. Wearing herself right down into another spell. Oh, I'm telling you, I just do not know how women do it. Well, they'll tell you the work won't get done by itself. Oh, yes, they tell me that, all right, but there's not a bit of sense to it. Waiting a day or two to scrub a floor wouldn't matter, not at all. It would to a woman. Oh, now you see. Oh, you're all alike. Oh, come on, Doc. Let's not argue our way back to Dodge. I don't get a chance to ride out on your calls with you very often. I don't want to spoil it by having to defend womankind. <laughs> or mankind either, for that matter. <laughs> all right, Giddy. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm kind of sorry we can't stay out a little longer. Yeah, I am too. It's not exactly refreshing in the long branch these hot nights. Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, if it weren't for that fool Hud Perkins, we wouldn't have to hurry back. Something the matter with Hud? No, I doubt it. I doubt if there's anything wrong with him that a little less whiskey wouldn't cure. <laughs> but I promised him I'd look him over when I got back to town. He sure does a lot of talking about how good your doctoring is. You better take good care of him, Doc. He'll drum you up a lot of business. Nah, he just needs somebody to tell him every so often that he hasn't got a fatal disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes him real good and friendly. Uh, until the next time. Well, he's your friend, that's for certain. Doc, yeah. look, there's somebody standing in the road up ahead. Uh, uh, Doc, it's an Indian. I see him, Kitty. Just sit quiet. He's not going to move out of the road. He wants us to stop. He's got a gun. No. Don't be frightened, Kitty. Just sit still. Yeah. Why do you stop me? What do you want? You, doctor? Yes, I'm the doctor. You come. You want me to come with you? Other way. You come. What does he mean? Well, he means to turn the buggy around and go back the way we came. Other way. There's another one, Doc, on a horse, back at that tree. Yes, I see him. I expect we better do what they want. I'm sorry, it's so rough, Kitty. It's mighty uneven ground. Oh, I'll make it fine, Doc. I wish, wish I knew where we were going. How far? Where do you take us? Not exactly gabby, that's one thing. I don't feel too talkative myself. 
No, neither do I. Oh, oh. What? Look at that, Kitty. In those cottonwoods by the river. Doc, I feel a little sick. My golly, there's, there's a lot of them. They've set up quite a camp down there. We'll be stopping soon. You just sit straight and quiet. Yeah, all right, Doc. And don't be afraid. Oh. You stop. Oh. Oh, men. They're walking all around us. Don't show any fear. Oh. Uh, is there a chief among you? I will speak to your chief. I am Little Wolf. I am chief. You will tell me why I've been brought here? You are a doctor. Yes? Yes, I'm a doctor. Walk down. Out of buggy. Little Wolf has not told me why his braves have brought me here. My son. He is sickened. Oh, you... You want me to look at him? You will make him strong. Walk down. If I look at your son, Little Wolf... The woman here in the buggy, she'll be safe. She will be safe. The chief will give his word. Little Wolf gives his word. I will come with you. You just sit quiet, Kitty. You'll be all right. The chief means what he says. I hope so, Doc. I, I won't be long. All right, Little Wolf. Show me the boy. Come. This way. There is no medicine man with Little Wolf. Medicine man made it magic. The boy still sickens. And you think I can cure him? Little Wolf was prisoner with white man. He saw white man's magic bring strength to a fallen soldier. You make my son strong. He, he lies in there. Go in. Hmm? Yes, I see. All right, little wolf, I'll have a look at him. Let me get down so I can see him. Hmm. Yes, he has a fever. Erratic pulse. How long since your son has spoken? Yesterday, sunrise. I see. Uh, he will be well. Your son's a sick boy. A very sick boy. You make him strong. I will try. You will stay here, in lodge, with my son. If I stay, little wolf, there must be a bargain. You bargain for the life of my son? I would bargain for the woman. She is to go free. If woman goes free, she will bring soldiers. No, no, I'll speak to her. I will tell her of your son. She will not bring the soldiers. Better she stay here. I have told you, little wolf. She will not bring the soldiers. Doctor, give me his word. The doctor gives his word. The woman can go. Mr. Dillon, the prairie ain't half ugly this time of the morning, is it? I don't know how you can see it at all, Chester. The sun isn't even up yet. Yeah, I know. Maybe that's why it don't bother me none. Yeah. Only trouble is, I always get hungry long about sun up. Hungry? You ate just an hour ago. Well, yes, sir, I know that. I don't know how you ever made out in the Army, Chester. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Not working around the supply wagons like a done. <laughs> You know, what do you reckon Mort Huggins wants of this? I mean, you figure it's important enough that we have to ride a full day out to his place and back? Uh, you didn't have to come, you know. Well, I don't know. There ain't nothing to do in Dodge except the whittle and spit. Well, you could have found Doc and told each other lies for a while. Mm, that one real old cuss won't stir out of bed till midday. Oh? Yes, sir, he took Miss Kitty with him in the buggy yesterday, and while he paid some calls, they wasn't even back when I went to bed. 
Wasn't no lamp burning in his place, and Miss Kitty wasn't at the Long Branch. Yeah, I know. Well, an evening off won't hurt either one of them. They work pretty hard, you know. Yes, sir, I suppose they do. But I can't help thinking that just about the time this old prairie is hot as a cook oven, Doc will be ambling along Front Street on his way to have a noontime beer with Miss Kitty. And Miss Kitty will be there cool and comfortable, sitting on a stool. Sam will be pouring cold beer into great big pitchers. And everybody oh, will for be heaven's around. sake, Chester, if you're going to grumble all the way out to Mort Huggins' place, you better turn around and start home right now. Oh, no, sir, I like it. I like it just fine. <laughs> all right, then, let's ride. We amble along like this, we won't be home before dark. <laughs> Moss. Why, Miss Kitty. Help me down, will you, Moss? Sure. Oh. Here. <sighs> Thanks. You want to sit down? No, I'll be all right. From the looks of that horse, this rig's been running most of the night. Yeah, it has. Oh? I waited up quite a spell for the doctor to come in. He must have run into a real bad case out there somewhere. Real bad case. He's still out there. Well, I'll fix it for somebody to go out and fetch him out. Hitch up a fresh horse. I didn't send the Peters for No, Moss, don't do that. Why, you ain't just going to leave him out there to walk home, are you, Miss Kitty? Where is Doc, anyway? Don't ask me that, Moss, because I can't tell you. You mean you don't know where you've been? I mean, I can't tell you. Wow. Have you seen Matt this morning? Why, yes, ma'am. He and Chester come got their horses before sunup. Rode out to the Huggins place. Be back late this afternoon, I said. Oh. Well, if you see him before I do, will you ask Matt to come down to the Long Branch? I want to talk to him right away. Sure I will, Miss Kitty. Thanks, Moss. Miss Kitty. Hmm? You sure you feel all right? Yeah, thanks. I'm all right. You just be sure to tell Matt. <laughs> You sure you don't want me to fetch you some dinner, Kitty? It's way past noontime. No, thanks, Sam. I don't feel like eating just yet. This coffee's fine. Yeah, her body should keep her strength up. But... Oh, no, not him again. Who's that, Sam? Hud Perkins. He's been asking after you all morning. Huh? You want me to send him away, Kitty? Uh, no, Sam. I'll talk to him. Kitty? Yeah, Hud? Well, I've been in here looking for you on and off all morning. What's on your mind? I want to know where Doc is. That's what's on my mind. He was supposed to doctor me last night. Well, he had to stay with somebody sicker than you are, Hud. Letty Green? Why, there ain't nothing wrong with her to amount to anything. Lim told me she's up and around already. Not Letty Green. He give me his word he'd be here. He ain't got no right to go back on his word Oh, like Hud, that. for heaven's sake. Besides, there's something mighty strange going on. Moss Grimmick says you brung Doc's buggy in yourself. Now, why would Doc want to go and let you take his buggy? I didn't steal it, Hud. It don't make no sense. How's Doc going to get back to Doc? Don't you worry about it. He'll get back. You bet he will, because I'm going after him. Must have headed west from Lem Green. Now, Hud, you just leave things alone. Don't worry about Doc. Well, it appears to me that somebody better worry about him, leaving him stranded off somewhere that way. I'm going to fetch you. Now, wait a minute, Hud. I'll take long extra horse, and I'll bring him back. Now, listen to me, Hud Perkins. Don't go meddling in things you don't know anything about. I know enough not to leave Doc out there. If you go after him, you can endanger Doc's life and your own, too. What do you mean by that? Just what I say. Doc in some kind of trouble? He won't be if you leave him alone. Sounds like somebody's holding him, forcing him to stay. Is that the way it is? I didn't say that. Well, I ain't gonna let nothing like that happen to Doc. He's got plenty of friends in this town. We'll go break him. Now, Hud. Hey, listen here, everybody. It seems to me old Doc's in some kind of trouble. We ain't gonna stand for that now, are we? Right, stop it. We'll just go get on our horses and go get him. Come on now, we'll meet in front of the depot in an hour. No. Let's go. Wait, Hud. Listen, come back here. You'll get him killed. You fools, you'll get him killed. Come back here. I... You sure couldn't stop him, Kitty. No, Sam, I couldn't. And if Matt doesn't get back, I guess there's nobody you can. Oh, 
I declare, Mr. Dillon, a day like today could drive a man to take a midweek bath. Yeah, Chester, it did get pretty dirty out there, didn't it? Pretty dirty? Ooh-wee. Say, you can tell folks you spent the best part of the day looking for three old sows. <laughs> well, if they ask me, I'll tell them, yeah. That's a fine thing for a U.S. marshal to be doing. You really think Mort Huggins thought them old sows was stole? I sure he thought so, Chester. Mort Huggins is a good man. He wouldn't get us out there on a... On a wild sow chase? <laughs> Did you hear that, Mr. Dillon? A wild sow I chase. I heard it, Chester. <laughs> yeah, well, that was kind of a joke, you see. Yeah. I could have said Well, a I can think of a better one. What? A picture of you rooting those mired-down sows out of that slough. <laughs> I guess that was a sight, all right. Yeah. Uh, you take my horse on around the livery stable, will you, Chester? I want to get right back to the office. Yes, sir, I will. Matt? Matt? What? Oh, Matt. hello, Kitty. I'm so glad you're back. Oh, what's the trouble? It's Doc. They'll kill him, sure. That Hud Perkins is Hud taking Perkins. him. Hud Perkins? Well, why would Hud Perkins want to kill him? Oh, well, Doc? it's not Hud, Matt. It's, it's the Indians. Doc made me promise not to send help. Now, now, wait a minute. Hold on. Just hold up a minute and start over again now, will you? Now, where is Doc? He's in an Indian camp on the river. Well, what's he doing there? Well, they stopped us, and they made Doc stay with him. The chief's son's very sick. But they'll kill him, sure, if that crazy Hud Perkins rides up there with his drunken bunch. You mean Hud Perkins has set out to rescue Doc? Yeah, Matt, but he doesn't know about the Indians. Well, how's that? Doc bargained with the chief. If he let me go, I wouldn't tell about it and send help, so I, I didn't tell Hud. Oh, I see. But with all this going on, I, I thought I'd better tell you. Was I right, Matt? Yeah, Kitty. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, you don't think Hud Perkins would be fool enough to ride all night, do you? Well, I don't know, Chester. He's not the kind to stop and figure things out. He sure ain't. The simpleton, he don't even know where he's headed for. And I hope we find him in time to tell him. Well, looks like we're having a little luck. Hmm? Somebody's fired down that wash there. Reckon it's Hud's? Well, I hope it's Hud's. Come on. I'm looking for Hud Perkins. Oh, Marshal. Chester, mighty glad you come to join us. Well, now, that ain't exactly... I want to talk to you, Hud. Sure, Marshal. There's coffee on the fire. I want you to take your men and turn around and go home. What'd you say? I want you to go on back to Dodge. Now, listen, Marshal. I set out to get Doc out of effects, and I mean to do it. You know where he is? No, but we'll find him. Come morning, we're going to spread out. We'll find him. You know what kind of a fix he's in? Uh, that don't matter none. I'm going to get him out of it, that's all. A good friend like Doc, it don't matter to me who's holding him. Well, it ought to matter. Don't make no difference to me. Not even if it's Indians? Indians? A moving band of Indians down the river away. They're holding Doc to tend to the chief's son. So that's the way it is. Yeah, that's the way it is. And the sooner you turn around and head back to Dodge, the better. Uh, Marshal, I ain't afraid of no Indians. We ain't afraid of no Indians, are we, boys? If the Indians have old Doc, we'll just break him loose, won't we, boys? All right, be quiet, all of you. Now listen to me. Is there anybody here who thinks he's a better friend of Doc Adams than I am? Well, is there? All right, then. You know that I'm as interested in getting him out as anybody is. Well, let's go get him in. And I'll tell you one thing for sure. If you all ride out on that Indian camp, you won't be doing Doc a favor. The least that'll happen is that you'll get him killed. And there'll probably be an Indian uprising to boot. Now, the best thing you can do for Doc is to turn around and go home and let me handle this. You figure to take care of it alone, Marshal? If it can be done at all, that's the only way to do it. Well, now, listen to him, boys. The Marshal thinks he can do the job better than all us together. Look, I know about these things. It's my job to know about them. Now, you go on, Hud. You go on back to Dodge, and you take these men with you. You always got to be the whole show, don't you, Marshal? Well, that may work in Dodge City, but it don't work out here. 
You tell me to go back to Dodge, you got a fight on your hands. All right, Hud, you suit yourself. You ain't giving me no more. <coughs> Want me to get his gun, Mr. Dillon? No, Chester, I think he's through. Now, any of the rest of you set on riding out of that camp? Because if you are, you're going to have to fight me before you fight any Indians. All right, then. Pick up Hud and get him back to Dodge. Come on, Chester. Let's see what we can do for Doc. Sure must have saw us coming by now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. But at least they haven't started shooting. Well, let's leave the horses here, Chester, and walk into camp. We won't look so much like the cavalry that way. White men, stop. They've saw us now, all right. All around us. You just stand steady. We come in peace. White men wear guns. Our guns stay covered. Indian guns not covered. You reckon they're going to shoot? I don't know, Chester. Just don't make any fast moves. It's all right. It's all right. They're friends of mine. The two white men are friends of mine. Well, yeah, it's all right now. It's all right, I tell you. You can put your guns down. My great <laughs> lie, Mr. Dillon. Them Indians are doing just what he says uh, to you. Hello, Matt and Chester. Well... You can be thankful that I was here. Well, I am, Doc. But you don't seem very glad to see us. And I, I told Kitty not to send anybody after me. That's a long story, Doc. I'm not interested in any long stories, Matt. Now that you've come, though, uh, how do you figure to get me back to Dodge? You riding behind uh, one of you two? Well, to tell you the truth, Doc, we figured to get you out the best way we could. Well, it's a good thing I didn't rely on you to work things out. Oh... Uh, you there, bring me my horse. Doc, you, you mean they give you your very own horse to keep? Why, certainly, Chester. That was part of the bargain. If I cured the boy, I got a horse and my freedom. What about the other part of the bargain, Doc? What if you hadn't cured the boy? Well, that's pretty simple, man. I wouldn't have needed the horse. Gunsmoke has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>